Yeah, just a little too slow. Otherwise, I think it was good. Red, Aaron. I pick a red because if they shift tab, I would show up as red anyway. <clears throat> so that's my logic. Nothing better than watching Terran lose. Sorry, buddy, but even if it's you playing. <laughs> but I'm not really a Terran. Don't I, don't I get some, I don't know, special treatment for that? Also, Wolfix? You excited, Wolfix? This is like multiple Terran streams in a week. Unbelievable. Give an option to stay with their color while still showing up correctly. <laughs> Is that an advantage? <laughs> I don't actually remember where the first depot is supposed to go against Zerd. Probably not here. Wherever. Okay. I feel better now. This is my CPL match though, so I probably shouldn't ask for too much advice during the game. This is the first time I remembered to put my barracks closer to my ramp so I could have turrets protecting the ramp and the barracks. We're doing it. Backseating annoys you. Well, I did forget the scout. There's a, like, kind of, yes, but there's a difference between, like, backseating when I'm, like, actually asking for coaching. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this depot because I forgot to scout. Yeah, we can do that. I'm down for that. Oh yeah, I just didn't see it. I didn't mean to ignore you. It's got to like really early, right? So far, the skills are bad for me.
Ah! Hit him. <laughs> That's a curse. It's actually trapped. It's amazing. You didn't never show up. There we go. I would love. I keep wanting to use this SCV.
won't be able to get this broken time. On accident. Ah, uh, that's all screwed up now. Good. Good up a hot key. Oh, 
issue. Five tries and I couldn't click it.
Ugh. <laughs> we won a game. All right, Wolfix, tell me why I suck so much. Okay, so let's uh, watch the replay. <laughs> yeah. So yep. You can uh, stream also on Discord. Yeah, I'll do that. You're not even a little bit proud of me, Wolfix. You're just gonna. No, it's uh, it was generally good, but there is very like big room to. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, take many many useful notes, uh, yeah. but generally it was very good uh, pressure on both sides, which I liked. So that that was the main feature of this game, which was very good. Yeah, my my whole thought process for that was first of all, like it's easier to get value out of your vessels if you're quick enough. If you're like mm -hmm. multi irradiating, and then plus if you're pressuring both sides, the counterattacks can't really come very easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, okay, so go only with your camera. Go where? Only with your camera, so you can disable the Zerg's camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we only see your information. Gotcha. Yeah, so the, the, the beginning is pretty meaningless. Uh, I mean, yeah, let's skip to like 10th minute or something, because well, let's not talk about the opening. I, I wanted to, to point out some, some things in the mid game or mid to late game. Mm. Yeah, so for, uh, yeah, first the thing which I noticed was that you only had one vessel for some reason when you first arrived to his base. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like I, I was still getting the eye on here. You didn't start two ports at once, I think, right? Or you uh, did? I think I did, I just forgot the add-on for one. We'll check. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this should never happen, yeah, especially so I did because like, add-on is super cheap, so you should always yeah. be able to afford it. Yeah, and this is actually pretty important, because it allows you to make tactical play with two firebots with defense matrix on versus stack lurkers. And it's super effective, and it can win you the game right away. So it's not like um, you yeah, shouldn't, uh, you know, pivot your game around the play, but it's a possibility. So it's yeah. good to have in your pocket. Yeah, I felt like I did, because when I got down here to his bottom right base, 
and I like you said I should have had two vessels and he his uh, hive was like just finishing he was just getting his hive tech it felt like there should have been a window for me to do something in that moment it depends generally if played correctly Zerg should always be able to swarm in time generally mm -hmm. you should assume that if they won't be able to do that it's their fault but of course you want you want to create this opportunity for yourself to, to abuse that they have no swarm yet but generally the problem with this one vessel was that uh, it doesn't matter if you radiate one of three lurkers which are stacked right right usually there are three if you re you radiate one it doesn't yeah I didn't even know but usually it's three so um because what you are doing there is not a pressure because pressure is when opponent has to react in some way to to your shit in this case you are standing there you irradiated one lurker but he doesn't have to do anything with that so right. it's not really a pressure right so yeah that's kind of the problem uh, but yeah now you should shift to his natural which is correct because you you cannot do anything right there so let's go to his nut yeah, that was the original thought process, and right. I got, okay. Like, you, you didn't do it at the end. Yeah, yeah, I I also didn't like watch uh, the the whole game mm. every second. So okay. Mm. Yeah. So already we have too much stuff there. I feel like too much what? Mm, stuff like too much, too many marines. I mean, because. Uh, you having two or three groups there doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, it should be already be like spread out between the bases, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like either you you can stand in his nut, or you can or you can stand in, on the twelve o'clock and take it, for example. Mm -hmm. So because it's very unlikely and very hard for Zerg to uh, attack the base protected by twelve marines at this point, right. uh, like almost impossible. And even if he will do that. It's kind of a win for you because he has to commit some defensive uh, powers to, to do that, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so right, right now the, the problem is like we are not on, like in the two places at once, right? Yeah, I'm like oh, just now finally getting yeah. set up. And I, and I also had this uh, thought during the game, like because your money is very high right now, right? It's I have that problem a lot in this matchup. Getting like really yeah, I rich. know, I know. It's it's natural. You will have this problem in this matchup all the time. But I have a question. Uh, how do you feel about having like six group, group of groups of marines or four groups of marines at any point in time like do you feel that it makes any difference for your army no it, it feels really wasteful like it, okay. it feels redundant when i have like a really high marine count because i'm pretty much but what it feels like when i have a bunch of marines is either i'm fighting lurkers or swarm either way so it doesn't matter if my marine counts like super high at that point so it like feels a little bit yeah redundant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, and I asked that because I had exactly the same thought process in the past. Mm -hmm. um, until I realized that having more marines lets you uh, do more things on the map which are not related to applying pressure or the attack. So, for example, uh, every. Like, like, for example, if you add 12 marines and 4 medics to your army right now. Mm -hmm. You can send them to the left top corner and protect your base, which you can take. Right. I, I started realizing that kind of like during this game. I started mm -hmm. like putting units up here and sitting here because it was like when I had those like Marines, Firebats, and Medics here, it was like I, I didn't feel like I was going to be missing these units at all while I'm just holding their front. Yeah, exactly. And he cannot do anything about that at yeah. this point. Like this base is immortal pretty much. If you are applying pressure on his nut and at the same time you have some units on the ramp. Mm -hmm. He cannot even because the, the only opportunity for him is either drop or sending like twelve links to this base. Right. So links are always stopped by uh, those marines on the ramp, and drop can be also stopped with those marines because drop will usually be like two lurkers or something like that. You can also kill that with those mm -hmm. with this small group. So yeah, that's that's the. Uh, you should always want to have more marines, pretty much. 
because of this reason. Because, yeah. for example, you can also put 12 marines with a few medics on the 6 o'clock also, as well. Right. And it's so... Think about that, like, when you are playing TVP and you want to take a base where are, there are goons and rivers, it's the same for the Zerg where there are 12 marines. Right. Yeah. It's so fucking hard for them to take this base. <laughs> and, yeah, it's too much uh, effort. Yeah, it's so much effort because you press team and attack move. This is exactly the opposite uh, thing than in TVP. Uh, your units are super strong without any control and they have to sweat to, to beat them. Yeah. Uh, it turns yeah, so broken. that's why we, we, we always... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we all always want more marines, right? Uh, because of that. So you can take uh, map control and bases mm -hmm. and, and shit like that. <clears throat> so another another thing in this game was that you went BCs uh, when... So, okay, first of all, BCs, what you should do, because you kind of use them with your main army and they are not good for that. Yeah, BCs they're better for be like... Used, uh... Yeah, like counterattacking to pull like Scourge, Muto, Defiler, that kind of thing. Because like, I guess with, their, with the army it's still the same solution, right? The Plague Swarm works exactly. way. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it doesn't matter if you have them or not. So in this game you should either stand with them on the left natural and killing the Gazer. Exactly, there. And hold position, kill the Gazer. It's good enough. It's huge value for you, in yeah. fact, to, to take out this Gazer. Or you should just send them to, straight to the top, uh, I mean bottom right corner. And just uh, create there. some chaos, create some yeah. multitasking issue for him, something like that. Mm. And the second thing with battle cruisers in this game is you, should, you shouldn't even make them in this game. Because he, were, he, he was going Hydras, which is... Uh, not the case where you should make BCs, you should make tanks in this case. Right. So, a uh, very good approach in this kind of game is to take this, for example, top left expansion, which is super valuable, and to, like make two factories there, or one factory even, but something. So you have this group of marines on the ramp, and then you add two factories and you produce mass tanks from there. And in fact, in every new expansion with gas, you can make one factory, Put a group of marines there and produce tanks there, and yeah. those bases b become pretty immortal over time. Um, and then against Hydra lurkers, uh, tanks are much better. Than this. And of course, <coughs> later on, uh, not now, but later on, you will have a situation where you will have no minerals but a lot of gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it ends up starting. It started happening later, yeah. Yeah, and every time in this situation, you should just straight up build vessels because they are universal always good mm -hmm. so like uh, i'll be honest with you the reason i went bc and i stopped making vessels because it's just too you much want effort to make your yeah it's easy i know <laughs> i know i know it's easy <laughs> so it's not like it's a massive blunder but it's just better option to go tanks yeah. and uh, if you want to go pcs then look for strategical Places yeah, for them, not, not use them in the main army. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. This is my, my, my thoughts during the game. It kind of felt like the main reason I won this was because he, he kind of stopped making the father over here and just started like pushing with only Hydra. And like, yeah, I, he, I know Bio at, beats at Hydra point, like really badly. Yeah, yeah. At some point, he had no Definer and only Hydras on, in the bottom left, and then when, when you uh, broke him. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah, and uh, last one thing, uh, firebots in late game, super good, very effective. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if he had 6 o'clock in this game, because we never scouted for it. Yeah, uh, but generally when Zerk is on 3 or 4 gazers, there is a point in the game when two of their gazers goes depleted, yeah. which is main and natural, and uh, this time it's like firebats are becoming fucking beasts because he will rely on Zerlings heavily from this point and on Hydras because Hydras are uh, low on gas in, the, in their costs so he will go like Hydra link the fire or something like that and firebats are just fucking wrecking that composition so uh, every time for example you're getting third gas it's good to start adding firebats generally into, the, into your mix. Yeah, and I think that's it. 
for, for this game. Okay. You could also use the dropship sometimes, but... I, I, I didn't even think about that till we were watching the replay, I was like, that... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't have to, but um, it's... Dropships are a little bit risky because, like, I... The way I see them is that you are... They have opportunity costs, right, in the sense of you're not making vessels during producing dropships. But uh, two first dropships are kind of half free in this regard because uh, control tower is making faster than science facility. So if you go control tower and start making your dropship right away, uh, the science facility will end uh, in like half of their time, production time, so you yeah. only lose half of this time that you would, would normally lose. Well, it felt like so, a good moment for me to have gone for it, at least, was when I was like floating the 4k. And I had like a ton of bio and just kind of sitting around. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, if I had like maybe a couple drop ships to just pull him around a little bit extra, like in his main or something. Okay. But, yeah, also, another another thing in this game was that uh, you had your rally point in your main, which was crippling you pretty much the whole game. Mm -hmm. Like, it's generally so worth it to, because in the game you feel like you have no time for anything and so on, and you just really want right to here. pressure, 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 yeah, just re-rally it uh, like into any kind of safe position that you can just because over time it really pays off because every new reinforcement will have less time travel. So it's very worth to, to take this couple of seconds to re rally. Yeah. Gonna argue with nothing that you've said so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but th those are very general things. Uh, but it's, it's good to have this. Late game TVZ overview. I think it's uh, just to know what to do is already good enough. Mm -hmm. Like I don't even want to focus on the opening because I feel like it's much easier to learn an opening. I think yeah. I'm not, not to master it, but just to give, have an idea of an opening. But I the like... information I gave you will use every game, pretty much almost every game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I felt like this time I was, I felt like my opener, like I know it obviously wasn't like correct, we'll say, but I, I felt like I at least for the first time playing TBZ on my own kind of had an idea of what I was like aiming for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked uh, standard, rather, like solid, it, it was just okay. I didn't look closely at the beginning of the game, so I cannot comment on that, but... Yeah, like yeah. going generally, I feel like three ranks, staying defensive, going into the factory, and then Bezos is very standard and stable way of playing. Usually, it will kind of work out. Mm -hmm. There are of course way to optimize this shit. This is like what I am thinking about now when I'm playing. Uh, when should I go two ranks fact, or when should I go three ranks fact, four ranks fact, or when should I go factory before the range upgrade, something like that. But generally, it's not uh, that important on your current level, I think. You just stay stable and get to the core idea of the matchup, kind of, is, is the point. Yeah, that was pretty much what I was aiming for, yeah. Don't die to muta. Yeah. That was my thought process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Don't die to muta is a very good approach. Make sure there is a muta, and then don't die to it and get <laughs> right. vessels. And, yeah. and that was pretty much it. And and this time I actually remember to put my barracks like near my ramp so I could have turrets covering the ramp mm -hmm. too. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And that's like the first step in this matchup. Right when you are making a second building, you can already screw it up. Yeah. And then uh, I liked very much that you made this uh, place for the factories and starports super good. Like this is very useful to make this kind of area where mutas will never come, so they yeah. cannot harass your CVs. Well, I was thinking too, just like tuck them in there. Yeah, that's like also stand like very basic and very important thing. <laughs> 